If you come across certain exploits like this one, you might wonder what are these symbols. These are used for pointers, which represents memory locations. Aside from exploit scripts, you will encounter them in other areas, such as reversing a binary. So it is important to understand the core concept. In this video, we will discuss them in ethical hacking point of view. We will use C as our programming language, as it is one of the most common low-level language out there. Different programming languages may handle this differently, but the concept is the same. Before we dive in, just a bit of context about this video. Last time I had an announcement in the channel about the type of videos I will publish at the start of this year. I will add small videos to improve the overall understanding on the topics we are discussing. This video is the first one of that type. So we will make this short but concise. Also, learning in YouTube is normally not structured compared to other learning platforms, but I'll try to make a link between different videos. For example, I can create more playlists to better categorize each topic or add something on the description. Not yet decided on how I will do this, but let's see how it goes. Let's get straight to the terminal and see some examples. Low-level languages like C has the ability to access the memory. Pointers are just reference to memory locations. I have here a simple program that prints the memory location of a number. First, we declare the data as type integer. To access the memory location, we need to use ampersand. In order to print it properly, we need to indicate that we are passing a memory address to print F. Let's try to look at the output. I compiled this already, so let's just run it. So this is the memory location of that number during the time of execution. If we run it again, the address will change. That's because I enabled address space layout randomization on my Kali. That is also known as ASLR, which is a common defense mechanism against buffer overflow attacks. Let's try to turn it off and see what happens. The data is now put into same memory location, and it never changes even if we run it multiple times. So, in summary, Ampersand is used to get the memory address of the data stored inside a variable. We can also store that memory address in another variable. This special type of variable is called the pointer. We declare it by putting an asterisk before the variable name. We can also put a space between them. Once a pointer is declared, you can use it like any other variables without using ampersand. Pointer declaration is what you will normally encounter on any C program. For example, you will see a lot of these pointers inside kernel exploits like this. So, it's really important to understand the concept. Since a pointer holds a memory address, that means we can access the data stored on that location. This is called dereferencing. To do that, we will use again the asterisk sign. This might be confusing because we also used asterisk on the declaration part. So, pay attention on where the asterisk is used. Then to print the data properly, we need to use a different format specifier. This must be the same as the data type we used to declare the original value. If not, we will see unexpected results. When injecting your shell code, sometimes you need to adjust the location by moving through memory addresses. Let's take a look at a simple program that will show us one way of moving pointers. I added statements on our script that will increment the pointer and print the new address. At the end, we will also get the data stored on the final value of pointer by dereferencing it. Let's compile and run it. During the start of execution, we see that the pointer is at address ending in hex 74. Then the value stored on that address is the one we declared, which is three. This is how it would look like roughly if we want to visualize it. We then increment the pointer. The amount of movement will depend on the data type. In this case, we declared it as int, which means four bytes of memory space. So the pointer moves four bytes ahead. Also notice that at this location, we don't know what the data is unless we difference the pointer to get it. Most likely it is garbage or some data used by another process. Same thing happens until the end of program. Only difference is that we perform a pointer to reference at the end, which showed us a value of zero. Let's try to run the program in a different way. This time, let's pass it through a debugger so we can see it on a deeper level. Let's add a breakpoint on our program just right before it exits so we can inspect the memory properly. In order to do that, we need to disassemble the program code to see the memory addresses each instruction is located. And yes, even the code itself is located on specific memory addresses and not only the data we are declaring. Let's add a breakpoint at this location. To view the breakpoint, we can use the info command. Let's now try to run the program. We see the output similar on how we run it outside of the debugger. And we hit the breakpoint, preventing the program and exiting. If we try to look at the string representation of the data stored on the first pointer location, we will see three. Let's try changing the format into a word or four byte representation. We can also see the content of nearby memory addresses by adding a repeat count. 
Here is our data, which is three, then some data on other memory addresses. Let's try to get the data on the last pointer location. It's an empty string. This is the same on what we got outside of the debugger, which is zero. When you perform reverse engineering, you will encounter a lot of pointers. Let's see some example. I'll open Ghidra, which is a free reverse engineering tool from NSA. Let's look for some sample projects I have. After opening the project, we need to perform analysis first. It's done analyzing the binary, so let's find the main function. It's normally on the left side and named as entry. On the right, we see the code that was recovered from the binary. We see here the pointers being declared. If you hover your mouse, it will also show you information about the pointer, such as the size. As we discussed a while ago, int type is four bytes. Let's search the code and find out where this pointer was used. So the memory address PVAR23 was stored on this pointer. If we click that, it will highlight the respective assembly instruction on the middle part of the screen. Take note that there is also an assembly instruction called PTR. I would say it's somewhat similar from the pointer from higher level languages like C. In assembly, this means write something at this specific point in memory. Before we end, let's see some of the ways on how pointers are used in exploits. First is a classic exploit against a Linux kernel called Dirty Cow. This is a race condition attack that allow you to manipulate password files in order to gain root access to a system. The author declared a pointer called map, which holds some random address in memory. It has a data type of void, which means no value. That means the author won't be storing anything on that memory address. Looking further down below, it passed the pointer to mAdvise system call. Then it is telling the kernel that it doesn't need the memory locations 100 bytes from the start of this address. Probably this function was used for performance reasons since dirty cow has the nature of slowing the system, or worse, making it unusable. Next example would be an exploit against NetFilter that allows attacker to perform privilege escalation. NetFilter is a kernel hook or framework that has access to the networking stack. This exploit performs heap spraying, which is a form of memory corruption technique. We see here that there is a pointer declared called ROP. Looks like this is performing return-oriented programming technique, which is used to avoid memory regions that can't be exploited. After it declared it as unsigned int, it stores the address of a buffer. Without reading the whole code, I guess that is where the shell code will start. On the succeeding lines, you see a lot of pointer arithmetic, which is similar on what we discussed on the earlier section, but it does it differently. It first stores some address on the pointer, then it increments the pointer. The next memory location will store another address and the pointer will increment again. If you see, by just reading exploits like this, you gain knowledge on different techniques. And most importantly, you are able to know the technicalities of the attack on how these exploits are carried out. Last example will be an exploit against Linux ptrace system call. ptrace allows one process to trace another process or control its execution. This hijacks the parent-child relationship of two processes in order to ptrace an SUID binary to gain root privilege. Here, a pointer of type char is declared. In other words, it declared an array of characters. In C, this are also called strings. Based from the definition of the vulnerability, it looks like the binaries here are the ones being ptraced. We can deep dive on these exploits on another video. In summary, Pointers are not only used to store memory address for shellcodes or instructions, but they can also hold characters or strings. Thank you for joining me in this video. I initially planned to make this under five minutes, but obviously we spent more than that. I hope you learned something. Feel free to ask questions on the comments. Thanks again, and see you on the next one.